The acceptance of oneself is the essence of the whole moral problem and the epitome of a whole outlook on life. You can't escape from yourself from moving place to place. Most people would rather deny a hard truth than to face it. Welcome to Traces of My Lipstick. So I'm searching for all these things to make me happy. But in reality, I spent 27 years being unhappy with myself. I'm so glad and grateful of my support system and my close friends and family. They have been able to love the unlovable and the unlovable is me. I used to be the most negative, unpleasant, person, um, my whole aura was just negative. I was so judgmental and everything about me was unhappy. No one wants to be around someone that's so unhappy and negative and I never realized that it showed so much. You know, you walk in a, a room and you just you feel uncomfortable because, you know, you notice the, the, the miserable. You know, people, I was miserable. I was miserable. I wouldn't have loved me. I wouldn't have liked being around me. I, I wouldn't have wanted to be my best friend. I wouldn't have wanted to be, you know, my boyfriend or anything. Someone once told me that they don't, they, never remembered me ever being happy. And I couldn't have agreed more. Growing up, I, I've never went, I've never went without, I've had a great life. I, oh man, I mean, I have had a great life, a great childhood. I've never went without, I've never not had anything that I wanted. I never experienced that. Now that wasn't my struggle. Um, and every, everyone's struggle is, is different. And so, you know, seeing, seeing me from the outside in, you would think, I mean, she has the perfect life. You know, she, she has all these nice things and she, you know, she seems like a happy person and she's, she always gives advice and she's always bubbling. She's always, she speaks so well and, you know, she's the face of, you know, so many things and you, you don't know how I, how I felt. And I covered it up so well, at least I thought I did. But in reality, I didn't. I spent my entire life feeling this way and masking it, thinking I was masking the way that I, that I felt and I wasn't. I got comfortable because I'd always been this way. But it was so uncomfortable. It was so uncomfortable, but it took me 27 years to, to realize this, 27 years. And then, you know, not only that, but my weight and, you know, then I started having seizures and it came out of nowhere. In my senior year of high school, the beginning of great things. I, I was supposed to go off to college. I, I was supposed to go away with my best friend. We were supposed to go to school together. And my parents wouldn't let me go. So that was denial in the very beginning. Denial. And I, I didn't take my medicine. I was falling out all over the place having seizures all the time, constantly. I, you know, I go to school, I, I joined a sorority. I try to make do with what I had in the position that, that I was in because I didn't have, I had, it was no option for me not to, to, to get an education. That was never an option. So I did what I was supposed to do 
and I still was unhappy. And so, I mean, the school, it got so bad that the school didn't even want me to be there. You know, so it's 10 years has gone by and I, I, I'm still in denial about an illness that may or may not ever go away. So, so that's another, you know, unhappiness. And instead of me just accepting it and, you know, moving on, I couldn't. I couldn't accept it. And then we go on. So I, I got over the hurdle. I got over that hurdle of school. I, I, I never gave up. I never gave up. I never gave up. I kept going. And I said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Um, regardless of what everyone said about me. I mean, I couldn't believe that a whole entire university didn't even want me to be there. Like, they acted as if I could just turn this on and off. It was, it was unreal. It was unreal to me. So in spite of, I got through it. I got through it. I had an awesome, internship you know everyone knows I love fashion that's my that's my that's my passion I've always wanted to I, 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 I live breathe fashion it was something that was a, a gift that I was so glad that I was able to pursue an education in in that and I never gave up not once not once did I give up and so at the peak of my high, one part of, of my part of my journey was to to accomplish that, and I I got all the way there. I got all the way there. I got a great paid internship. You know how many people get paid interns, and I was it was a corporate intern, and I just knew that you know what I'm gonna this is I'm gonna be at this company I'm working for a great company I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna kill it and I'm gonna do me and I'm gonna I'm gonna excel and I'm gonna prove all these people wrong that that tried to keep hold me back all because I just was having seizures and I did it I, I went in there with with the attitude that I'm gonna I'm gonna be great I'm gonna be great you know, I'm glam. I'm gonna kill this. One problem was though, I walked in and I see these oncology papers on the counter in my kitchen and I'm like, what is this? You know, I, I mean, I really don't know how I feel at that moment. It was like I was nonchalant, but then I was just like, surely my parents wouldn't keep anything like this from me or anything you know like that so i immediately went off you know i'm i'm fronting my parents i'm like what is this you know so my dad explained that um well you know your mom and i didn't want to stress you out because um you know we knew you had finals and you've, you've been working so hard and you know, we didn't want to stress you out with this. And I'm like, huh? What do you mean, what do you mean? stress me out? I mean, I, someone has cancer and at this point, I don't even know who it is and he, they're worried about me being stressed out about final exam. You know, I mean, are you kidding me? And it was my dad. And he was so, he was so nonchalant about the whole ordeal. It was, it was like, hey, I'm going in for, you know, procedure. So what we're gonna do? We have a game plan, and this is what they told me, and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna kill it. And that's where I got that from. That's every all my hustle and grinding and determination came from him. And that's exactly how he approached this cancer. You know, some people, they think their their life is over with. They, they immediately go into a deep depression and, you know, they call all these people and, you know, not to say that there's anything wrong with it, that 
I'm just saying he acted as if it was this is this is my mind this is nothing like wow like are you wow wow and at that point I had no idea of that that was the beginning of so much I had no idea at all so my dad was diagnosed with stomach cancer I started a great internship because of the amount of stress that I endured at that time, it was so stressful. I, I, you know, I, I, I still killed it though. I still went in there and killed it because he was motivating me while, while going through this journey that he was going through. He was still motivating me, and I was still killing it. And every day I would come in, and I would show him all these pictures that I would of my work and everything. And he's like, "You, you better get it, because because I believe in you." And it was always that way. It was always that way. And so, as the process went on and the internship, it ended. I was offered a job. And I'm like, this is perfect. This is this is perfect. I'm graduating in a couple of months. You know, uh, I thought my dad was making progress, and I'm, I accepted it. So we go into the fall semester, and it wasn't even a couple of weeks that I I quit because I had to see about my dad. You know, I, I stopped everything that I was doing to make sure that I was right there the whole while. And you know, his, the only thing he ever said was, you don't worry about me because you need to make sure that you got your schoolwork and you're fencing to graduate in a couple months. And I did just that. I, my dad, my father was dying and he, all he wanted me to do was just finish what I started. Just finished when I started. And a month before I finished what, what he wanted me to do, he was gone. Even in the midst of all that, you know what the university said? Well, you know, you can just come back next semester and finish, you know, because your dad died. I'm like, my dad died three weeks before I graduated and you want me to come back? Like, I'm here now. Like, what do you mean? Because they thought I couldn't handle it, but I did. And I kept masking it, and I never dealt with it. Because I didn't know how. I didn't know how, and I was, I mean, everyone deals with death different. So then here we go into my business, and I opened a business and I did so many great, I was a business owner. I never thought in a million years that I would be in that position. It was, it was so much, it was like a breath of, of fresh air. And it was, I was supposed to be so happy because I have all these things. I'm, on, I'm in my 20s and I own a business. That's a big deal. And I still wasn't happy. So, looking from the outside in, you still don't understand why. But it's because of so many problems and issues that we sweep under the rug and we choose to avoid it. We choose to deny our truths. And until you accept it and accept the, the process, only then will you be able to live and really succeed. So you have to allow people to embrace you and support you and stand beside you. You have to allow them to, to be there for you because you're gonna need it. Because you're about to face 
a transformation, a transition, a new you. And you're going to need them. You got to be able to look in the mirror and say, hey, I'm a new person and I'm going to face my truths. My wake up call was acceptance. That was that was my breath of fresh air. The day that I woke up and I said, it was like a sigh of, of relief. Like it was like a, a release, an unexplainable feeling of change. Change is a beautiful thing. Change is a beautiful thing, but you have to get there. And I'm telling you, I was so uncomfortable. Oh my, oh my goodness, it was, it was, it was uncomfortable. I felt as if I couldn't do anything else. Like you're at a crossroad and you have no idea what to do. As if when people say, you know, when you hit rock bottom, yeah. Well, my rock bottom was different. My rock bottom was not because of of an addiction my my rock bottom was not a, a lack of finances my rock bottom was not the close of my business or any of those things my rock bottom was within me it was within me and i i couldn't control it and sometimes you have to be uncomfortable so unbearably uncomfortable that you have to move in order to create a diamond, you must apply pressure. Wow. You know, everyone wants to be a diamond, but they don't want to be cut. You have to accept the process. That's deep. And I, I constantly repeat those mantras to myself daily. You have to be willing to pay the price and make the sacrifices to live a, a happier life. It's, that's a part of the process. Your, your life is going to be so unrecognizable. You're, you're not, it's just, it's going to be a breath of, of fresh air. And you're not, you're not going to be able to recognize your own self. And that's a good thing. That's a great thing. Get out of your own way. Get out of your own way. Your old life may not work for you. Your, your old relationships, your old friendships, your old everything, or, or your, your old careers, your old jobs, and maybe it's a combination of, of all of them. They, they, they may not work for you. So, as my daddy would say, <laughs> you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. You gotta, you gotta be willing to do what it takes to get a, a new you, a better you. Love yourself enough to do what it takes. Love yourself enough to do what it takes to, to get a better you. It's gonna feel good. <sighs> you only get one life. So you gotta make your next move your best move. And you gotta face it. Traces of my lipstick.
Weighing 376 pounds is shocking, and I'm comfortable with, with saying it. It was really pretty much not monitored. Oh no, Nate, you can't have that. Well, go ahead on and get it. I wanted to blame my parents, really. Um, especially my mother. Like, I've really let myself get to this where, I mean, you know, people would compare my weight to an elf. I'm really at peace with this because it's like, this is my child. We don't want your child to be healthier. It's almost like they treated me, my obesity as like, oh, that's just part of, you know, how she's gonna, how she's gonna be. She'll lose it. I was being teased, but I would basically piggyback off of that and and join them. You know, like it doesn't really bother me. I just was praying that you will one day come to the point to where, you know, I, I I can't do this. I was smoking and I was overweight and I didn't know that my dad was not gonna be here anymore. I'm not just doing this for me. I feel like I'm doing it for, for him as well. So I'm very excited about that. And of course I know he'll be there, you know, with me in spirit.